Hey everybody, welcome to Facebook Live episode number seven. It is Wednesday, July 17th. And I wanna talk with you today a little bit about um, why you might get stuck in therapy and what you can do about it. Um, sorry for the late notice, it's been a crazy week and um, this is about the only time I could do a Facebook Live and, and so here I am. Some of you will probably, a lot of you will probably be watching this later. Um, so certainly feel free to reach out as always if you have any questions about this. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and your considerations. But anyway, back, back to therapy um, and reasons why um, you might get stuck and why you might feel frustrated. You know, it is absolutely possible in life to feel a lot of satisfaction in your, in your adult experiences, um, provided that you have the tools, the resources, and the supports to work through the things that get in the way of that um, satisfaction happening. So, you know, there are a number of reasons why people feel stuck in therapy or get stuck in therapy. And although I'll talk about a few of those today, you know, there, there are lots and lots of reasons why this happens. So um, these are just some ideas that I have around it. And, um, you know, as always, I'm interested in hearing other people's experiences. So I made myself a few little notes because I want to be sure that I touch on some of these that, are, that feel really important. But, um, Probably, I would say, one of the biggest reasons why a person gets stuck in therapy is because the um, kind of therapy that you're participating in um, has only is only able to get you so far. So you know, when we think about traditional therapy, a lot of therapy is cognitive or, or talk therapy, which uh, talks to the left side of our brain, which is very rational, very logical, very analytical, the part of us that generally is already smart enough to know we've got issues and, and probably has even come up with strategies and things, kind of workarounds to deal with those kinds of things like, um, you know, addiction or anxiety or things of that sort. The problem is that um, talk therapy is limited because it only talks to that left brain part of us. You know, when we think about feelings and unconscious experiences that get stuck in our bodies, we have to be able to access those, which we can't get to through left brain kinds of things. So talk therapy is, is only gonna get us so far. It's, you know, a cognitive understanding of our story and our histories is, absolutely essential and absolutely important. I am not uh, downplaying cognitive therapy. The problem is, is it will only get us so far on our healing journey because to really be able to get to a place of great and deep satisfaction, we have to be able to process and move through the un, uh, unfelt experiences that got cut off inside of us. So out of the box, right brain kinds of experiential therapies is, is how we're gonna get there. Um, in my practice, I use a lot of that uh, because whatever's, whatever can get us to the heart of the matter, get us down into the feelings is fair game. I use things like guided imagery, visual journaling, music, art, dream work, movement, whatever gets us there is fair game. So part of the reason why you might be getting stuck in your own healing process is because the kind of therapy that you are participating in is only going to get you so far. And to be sure, that's what a lot of the mainstream therapies out there do. It's more of a cognitive or rational approach. Another reason why many people get stuck in therapy is because you may have outgrown your therapist emotionally. And although that sounds really strange and odd, therapists are people like everyone else. And if your therapist is actively committed to growing and healing their own deep inner um, issues and experiences, then you know they'll be able to take you that far as well. But if your therapist or your healers um, are not in their own deep healing process, and I'm not talking about a rational cognitive healing process, but a very deep experiential process, then they're only going to be able to take you so far. And in many cases, I have seen and um, ended up getting clients in my office who had outgrown their therapists. And so for that reason, their therapists were not able to take them any further in the therapy process. So some of the reason why you might be getting stuck in your own therapy might actually have nothing to do with you and more about the therapist uh, sitting across from you. So that's also something to think about. Um, another reason why people can get stuck in therapy sometimes is because um, stuck, 
doesn't always mean stagnant. And, and we don't think about that. We don't we don't think about that as a culture. You know, oftentimes we think about stuck and and we get into this panic or this frenzy because of the culture we live in to get out of it. You know, how do we how do we get out of this? Well, that's wonderful when we're talking about outside world kinds of challenges and issues and struggles, but it doesn't work so well inside. You know, if we are in a place of stuckness or a place where we're feeling lots of frustration, I like to call those places more of an impasse emotionally. There's a reason for it, a very, very important reason. And we're not always going to know that with our brain. So in order to be able to work with this place of impasse and eventually move through it in a, in a way that is um, the next best thing for your growth, you have to be working with a therapist or a healer who understands this experience and the necessity of impasse as part of the healing and growth process. You know, I like to think of impasse as a place of active waiting. Uh, there's a lot of work that can happen in impasse. You know, it's it's a place of acclimation emotionally. I, I think about it like, um, you know, a scuba diver as they're coming back up from the depths of the ocean. You know, they don't just shoot straight back up. They have to acclimate at each place. Well, when we reach a place of impasse in our therapeutic process, it's the same kind of experience. We're acclimating to diving into and feeling deeper feelings. And here's the thing, folks. We will not move out of impasse until our spirit determines it's time for us, our soul, our deep wisdom, however you call that for you. Our brain is not responsible for that. Our brain may very well be um, telling us it's time to, to feel more, but until our spirit deems we're ready, we're not gonna go anywhere. And we need to work with people, healers, therapists, other clinicians who understand and honor this place of impasse. There is a lot of work that happens in that place. And if you find yourself feeling stuck or frustrated, it might be time to reach out to find a clinician or a therapist who can uh, help you work with this place and do the uh, necessary work that can be done in that place. Um, another reason for why people can get stuck in therapy is that sometimes it's just a simple boundary that you need. So, you know, we think about being stuck. Uh, sometimes it's, it's the way that our spirit is telling us we need to pause for a moment. We need to digest. We need to take a little break. You know, it's it's kind of like eating. None of us move straight over to the table, sit down and eat, eat, eat until we pop. We eat, we move away, we digest what we've taken in. When we're hungry again, we come back, we take a little more in, we digest. So there's this natural movement towards and away from the dinner table. Well, it's the same thing in terms of therapy and our healing process. We can only digest and integrate so much at a time. And so rather than seeing that as a problem, rather than seeing that as a failure of some sort or a flaw, what would it be like if you could understand being stuck as also necessary, a necessary place? That it's the place where your spirit is, is putting the brakes on uh, figuratively saying, hold on, we are digesting this and building supports so that when it's time to take a next step, we can do so. And again, this is not a brain thing. This is not a rational cognitive left brain thing. So we need to be working with therapists and counselors and other healers who understand that um, healing doesn't look like some straight linear progression upward into the sky, that it's uh, starting and stopping and opening and closing and healing and, and uh, digesting. Um, and for those reasons, a lot of times in mainstream society, mainstream therapy, um, you know, getting stuck gets a bad rap, gets a bad name. So sometimes it might just be time for you to take a little break, to step back and digest the things you've learned and move back towards therapy when it's time. So, you know, like I said before, there are lots and lots of reasons about why therapy doesn't work for certain people. Sometimes it's about the type of therapy we're in. Talk therapy is only going to get us so far. Experiential body, mind, spirit approaches like I do in my practice are going to take us very, very far in our process if we're open to that. And there's lots and lots of other reasons. So I'd love to hear more about your experiences with therapy. And if you've ever felt stuck in therapy, um, please make comments below in the boxes. Feel free to reach out to me if you need to. 
But um, that's all I have for that right now. Um, I've written a little bit about this topic too, so if you're interested, I'll include a link uh, where you can go and read a little bit more about my thoughts on this topic. Um, and then a couple little quick notes before I wrap up today. My visual journaling class is open for registration, so for those of you who might want a different taste and a therapeutic approach, this is a wonderful way to get your feet wet in a more experiential, creative, body-mind-spirit approach to deep healing. Um, and I also wanted to let folks know that I will be out for a little bit of time. So I will not have a Facebook Live next week or the following week, but we'll be back on Facebook Lives on Wednesday, August 7th. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Please feel free to reach out with any comments or questions that you might have. And as always, thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.